Ladies and gentlemen, as father of the bride, it is my duty and pleasure to make the first speech. I have been given lots of advice about what to say, such as no smutty jokes. Try and remember. Um, what's her name? And <laughs> 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 yes, keep my sh speech short. Sit down and shut up. I'd like to start on behalf of the bride's mother, myself, and the groom's parents, Sue and Paul, by giving a warm welcome to everybody and a really big thank you for coming along to celebrate Becky's wedding and Pete's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also wanted to take a brief moment just to let us all think about those loved ones who couldn't be here tonight. Yeah. And it, one of the things that came to mind was Becky's nans, Elsie and Heather, who would have been immensely proud of Becky and Pete and really happy for this occasion. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, at this point, actually for the people who aren't here, I'd like to ask you to raise your glasses and just do a toast to absent friends and family. Now, fathers are naturally biased about their daughters, but I'm sure you'll agree with me that Becky looks absolutely stunning tonight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's at this point that the idiot's guide to uh, wedding speeches says that I'm allowed to say a few embarrassing things about wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, she remembers far more embarrassing things about me than I do about her. <laughs> so I'm going to skip that bit. <laughs> <laughs> But what, what I will say is, though, that um, over the years, Becky has uh, given Sharon and I such an immense amount of joy and happiness. And we've been so privileged as her parents to see her grow to become an amazing, generous, intelligent, and very popular woman. <laughs> but... <laughs> negative, but it leads me on to Pete, you see. No <laughs> <laughs> bride is complete without a groom. And at this point, I can't exactly say he looks absolutely stunning, because it doesn't really fit with a groom, really, but he certainly looks elegant and suave. <laughs> Pete has got many great qualities, as we all know. One is appreciating the finer things in life. Because after all, he did marry Becky. <laughs> <laughs> and Shana and I are so glad that Becky has found someone who is so special to her. And at this point in the father of the bride's speech that I'd like to really formally welcome Pete into our family, although he has been a good part of our family for a good deal of time. <laughs> ah, now comes the tricky part. I'm, I'm the older speaker. I'm the old speaker, so I'm supposed to impart some of my wisdom about marriage. <laughs> you have to So I had a real big struggle with this, so I, I thought I'd <laughs> I want to share one thing I've um. learned from two of the greatest philosophers from the 20th century. Mm. And the first one being the Beatles. <laughs> uh, all you need is love. Uh, love yeah. is all you need. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, good. The second one, Boris Gump. <laughs> 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 it's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> from these two profound statements, we can distill the secret to the success in marriage. This is my false part. So from the first... Love is all you need, or all you need is love. Love. <laughs> From the second, life is like a box of chocolates. I think it fits with Becky's choice of head. <laughs> so that brings me almost to the end of my speech, after the really awful dad joke type stuff. I've got to uh, sit down in a short while. But before I do that, I want to share with Becky and Pete, one final thought <coughs> on behalf of all of us, and I've got to read this bit because I can never remember the matter. So. <laughs> okay, so, Becky and Pete, may you be blessed with happiness that grows, with love that lasts, and a joyful life together. 
We wish you enjoyment for today, the fulfillment of all your hopes and dreams for tomorrow, and love and happiness always. So please, everyone, if you can just stand up and raise your glass. <laughs> Toast to the bride and groom. Bride, bride and groom! And Thank you. <laughs> very long, uh, but I'd just like to start in a traditional manner by thanking everyone that's come. Uh, that includes people that have lived very close by and also people that have come from abroad, so thank you all. Uh, I appreciate especially those that have had to change their work patterns and also those that have had to wake up before midday on the weekend. <laughs> uh, but also thanking both sets of parents because without your ongoing support and money, we couldn't. <laughs> Get lost now. <laughs> 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 um, I know first hand how much work has gone into uh, getting here today and uh, making the day as perfect as it has been. So I'd like to thank all the bridesmaids, Becky herself and the parents for sparing me all that effort. <laughs> 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 um, if, I, if I'd have organised the wedding, we likely would have seen Becky coming down the aisle to the Imperial March. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, on the backdrop of the Death Star. <laughs> and likely listening to my mechanical breathing as I would have been dressed as Darth Vader. <laughs> but, um, have, you know, having seen today, I can appreciate why I might have been wrong. <laughs> um, can I also add that... Um, me and Becky, you know, had a thing thought and decided um, that we would give my friend the amount of responsibility that we thought they could mentally handle, <laughs> which is none. <laughs> uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say that their, that my level of responsibility was really only one notch above theirs. <laughs> um, on a personal note, obviously today marks the culmination and highlight of our decade relationship. Um, and, you know, I just want to echo what Ian said, really, and whilst it's today that we legally become family, um, I've really felt part of the family for many years, so, um, you know, I want to, you know, thank Sharon and Eel, uh, Ian, <laughs> <laughs> Eel and, Eel and Eel. Shelley for that. <laughs> you know, I really think that, uh, that speaks to their, their welcoming nature, so thank, thank you. Um, and, and moving on, those of you that know me well know that I'm not one that has much of an emotional range. <laughs> um, you know, I, I once did an, uh, you know, an assessment on empathy and I got zero percent. <laughs> you know, the race of people that I relate to the most are the Vulcans. <laughs> How, however, um, you know, it's hard not to feel emotional when I realised that I found someone so kind and beautiful and selfless as Becky and really it is quite simple, I love you very much and you make me very happy. Oh. Uh, un until now, I can only assume that you've been with me because of my fiendish good looks <laughs> and my sparkling charisma. <laughs> but today, to that, ad, to that list, I can add legal obligation. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, all those nice things escaped me when I realised he forgot to ask me to be his best man. <laughs> And I'm really pleased that no one else turned up at the ceremony expecting to do the same job. 
First off, we've had lots of thank yous, and my, my first thank you is to Pete for allowing me to rewrite his speech at 11 o'clock last night. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to seriously thank all the bridesmaids for all their help, and I heard that Hendu was absolutely fantastic, uh -huh. and the afternoon tea a couple of weeks ago was a really nice touch. Uh -huh. And they all look absolutely stunning yeah. today, so really thank you. Great. I'd also like the, the opportunity to you know, talk about how nice the groomsmen look today, but I've been warned about lying in my speech. <laughs> <laughs> now, anyone that knows me and Pete might think that we're fairly similar on paper. <laughs> we both went to the same schools, we had roughly the same sets of friends, we both played for the same sports teams, both decided to be doctors and went off to medical school, and we're both now propping up the same A&E &E department at one of the local hospitals. Some even say that we look a little bit alike and we sound a little bit similar, but really that's where the similarities end. <laughs> you go online to have a look about nice and bad things to say about your brother in a best man speech, and the first thing they say is, comment on shared embarrassing experiences. <laughs> well, fortunately for Pete, he's a pretty steady sort of guy, and there's not too many of those opportunities. So then you think, right. Are there any personality traits I can make fun of? <laughs> Jackpot! <laughs> the problem, where to start? <laughs> There's his, his problems with timekeeping. His attachment to fantasy football. His table manners, which are actually pretty good today, well done. <laughs> There's his disorganisation. His lack of empathy. There's his sense of dress code, his taste in decor, his absolute inability to let anything go. 20 years on, and he's still nagging me about that half can of coke that I stole off him when we were kids. <laughs> the list went on and on, but I was told to try and keep this short. As much as I joke about Pete's poorer personality traits, he does have some good ones. He does have an ability to adapt and change. As we were growing up, I spent majority of my childhood telling Pete how much of a runt he was. <laughs> and taking every opportunity to fight him and beat him up without any problem at all. Pete obviously took this on board and started working out. Now I'm pretty glad that we don't have too much to fight about because I'm not so confident on the outcome anymore. Although I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve. But even so, to this day, I can't quite fathom how Pete managed to end up marrying someone quite as great as Becky. And I speak for all of Pete's family to say just how relieved we are that she's legally stuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder how Pete and Becky started seeing each other and ended up as a couple. And I think, well, she probably looked at Pete and his friends who were the ushers here today, and they were the competition, and then it all makes sense. <laughs> Becky has, over the years, become a member of the family, and we really, we really realised that Pete couldn't have done any better in choosing a wife. She's not only beautiful, she's kind, she's caring, she's thoughtful, she is incredibly patient. <laughs> and there's no one else that can make Pete do absolutely anything she wants. <laughs> Everyone says that opposites attract, and I, I think to some extent that's true. Becky brings order and organisation to Pete's absolute chaos. <laughs> and Pete, well, he brings height. <laughs> For Pete and Becky, however, their, their strength as a couple comes from using those differences to support each other. And they've shown that driving backwards and forwards whilst a long way apart at university for years and the stress and strain of buying their first house last year and then having to rebuild the same house over the same period of time. And I have no doubt and I'm sure that they'll continue to have loads of success in the future. So I just want to be one of the first to form this aid. Congratulations. And I wish you a really happy future together. And I would hope everyone would join me in a toast. To Peter Becky. Peter Becky.